So in this session, we are going to have a look at Cambridge Book 12, Test 3, and this is for the academic students. Now, before we discuss all the reading answers, I'd like you to do the reading paper. So download the paper, time yourself for one hour, and then answer all 40 questions. At the end of one hour, we will have a look at the answers. So pause the video and try the paper on your own. All right, so I hope you would have finished the paper by now, right? You would have answered all 40 questions. Let's have a look at the answers. Reading passage 1, questions 1 to 13. 5, 3, 8, 1, 4, 6, 2. Next one, pirates. The S needs to be there. Food, oil, settlers, species, eggs. Reading passage 2, questions number 14 to 26. D, C, F, G, D, B. Vaccinations, antibiotics, mosquitoes. When you're writing mosquitoes, you can write OS or OES. Either way is fine. Factories, forests, polio, mountain. Passage 3, questions 27 to 40. Dopamine, pleasure, caudet, anticipatory face, food, B, C, a, B, D, F, B, E, C. So make sure that when you're checking these words, you have to check for the proper spelling. Right? Now this test has a bit of more words than the previous ones. Right? So check for spelling. If one letter even is wrong, the answer is wrong. And check your score. Put down out of 40, how much do you have? And then what is it equal to? Is it 5.0, 5.5? You'll have to have a look at it. Right. Okay. So let's discuss the answers now. Passage 1, Flying Tortoises. Questions 1 to 7. Reading passage 1 has 7 paras A to G. We have to choose the correct heading for each paragraph from the list of headings below. Now before we start discussing, you would be wondering, okay, where are the headings below? Now, I don't have the reading paper here. You should have the reading paper in front of you, opened up on your screen on one side, and on the other side, you should have my video minimized. If not, you should have the hard copy, which is the printed version in front of you while watching the video. Now, I want it to be student-centered, right? Rather, you should be doing it through and, you know, following through why, where, which para, which a sentence, right? Without just sitting and watching it like that, okay? You have to do it because it's important for you to engage and to keep the momentum going. Now, para A. The first para is about inhospitable environment of the Gallopsogos Island. So it's an island, right? And why it's inhospitable, right? It explains that the islands were colonized by
by one or more tortoises from mainland of South America. There is no heading about the environment. Colonize can be considered the same as to populate. Moreover, the author claims the inhospitable environment is home to a giant Galapagos tortoise. Hence, one, more tort one or more tortoises from main Southland America populated the islands. So, the heading 5 is most appropriate, okay, because it talks about populating and therefore the answer should be 5. In para B, the author mentioned what happened to the tortoises after human arrival and those negative impacts for the tortoises such as taken on board and these ships act as food supplies. They means the humans hunted the tortoises and destroyed their habitat to clear the land for agriculture and so on. So all of these can be considered as the disadvantage of tortoise or the negative impacts. Right? So therefore the heading for this paragraph should be 3. Developments to the disadvantage of tortoise population. So 3 is the most appropriate answer. Para C. Para C is about tortoise breeding center with its captive breeding program. Work began on this program in 1989 and is dedicated to protecting the island's tortoise populations. So this program was the starting point for the tortoise conservation and therefore the start of the conservation project seems to be the most appropriate answer. Therefore the answer should be 8. Para D. Paragraph D told us about an exact point. About 5 years of age at which their size and weight and their hardened shells are sufficient to protect them from the predators. And the author claims, but if people wait too long after that point, the tortoises eventually become too large to transport. So that means we need to find the perfect timing to captively bred the tortoises and to be reintroduced into the wild. Hence, the importance of getting the timing right seems to be the most appropriate answer and therefore it should be number one. Para E. In this paragraph, the writer mentions Repatriation efforts, which refers to every endeavor to bring the tortoises back into the islands. The author tells us that at first this work was done in small numbers, but then it was decided to work out more ambitious reintroductions. So that means bigger, larger scale. They bought 300 of the breeding centers tortoises back to their islands by helicopter. It was a much bigger number based on a bigger idea. Therefore, heading 4. Planning a bigger idea seems to be more appropriate. Now, note, you may be confused between heading 4 and heading 7. Looking for a home for island tortoises. However, this repatriation, which means taking them back to the place where they used to be, 
they are not looking for anything they're just being taken there that is why we choose the answer four should be clear for you in terms of english para f the three remaining headings are carrying out a carefully prepared operation right so carefully prepared operation looking for a home for the islands tortoises right young meets old that means the young and the old meet each other para f is about the preparation to a use helicopter to bring the tortoises back to their islands the author mentioned during a period of three days a group of volunteers from the breeding center worked around the clock worked around the clock means every time okay uh, worked around the clock to prepare the young tortoises for transport in addition we told that groups of volunteers spent some time on the islands before the tortoises arrived clearing the sites for the helicopters to land there is no line about looking for a home so therefore heading 6 carrying out a carefully prepared operation is the most suitable answer therefore the answer is 6 para g in the second sentence of this paragraph the author mentioned eventually one tiny tortoise one tiny tortoise came across a fully grown giant who had been lumbering around the island for a hundred years one tiny tortoise refers to young while a fully grown giant means old right so hence young meets the old heading seems to be more appropriate so the answer would be 2 questions number 8 to 13 complete the notes below choose one word from the passage 17th century small numbers taken um, on ships used by who right so 17th century small numbers taken ships used by who 17th century is mentioned in the second sentence of para b so we have to pay attention to this part from the 17th century onwards pirates took a few on on board for food right so a small number was taken on to ships by whom by the pirates by pirates right next question question number 9 and question number 10 okay so both together plus means both together right in the 1790s very large numbers taken on to whaling ships kept for what and also used to produce what okay so what are the keywords 1790s large numbers whaling ships also kept for something and to produce some now if you go to the next part of para b right it is about what happened after the arrival of whaling ships in the 1790s that is relatively immobile and capable of surviving for months without food or water and tortoises were taken on board onto these ships to act as food supplies during long ocean passages right the tortoises were taken on to ships to act as food supplies that means they were kept for food right so very large numbers were taken on to whaling ships and kept as for what kept for food and also used to produce what right so um 
it goes on to say sometimes their bodies were processed into high graded oil they were also used to produce high graded oil but because you can use only one word we are not going to put high grade we are just going to put oil here right so first answer number nine food second one oil Question number 11. Hunted by who on islands? Right? We also mentioned the word hunt later in Para B. They hunted the tortoises and destroyed their habitat to clear the land for agriculture. We have to look at the previous sentence to find out who they refer to. Right? So, in total, an estimated 200,000 animals were taken um, from the archipelago, right? So it means a lot of islands, Dupat Samohyak, right? Before the 20th century, this historical exploitation was then exacerbated, that is to make it worse, right? When settlers came to the islands. So hunted by who, right? Obviously they mean the settlers, right? So, therefore, the answer should be hunted by the settlers on the, on islands. And that should be your answer. Right. So, question number 12 and 13 together, right? So, habitat destruction for the establishment of agriculture and by various blank, not native to the islands, which also fed on baby tortoises and tortoises. So you have to fill in the gaps, right? So they not only hunted tortoises and destroyed their habitat to clear land for agriculture, but settlers, but settlers also introduced alien species ranging from cattle, pigs, goats, rats and dogs to plants and ants, right? That either prey on the eggs and young tortoises or damage or destroy their habitat. So when you come, that is the last para, that is the last sentence in para C, right? The word alien means coming from a different country or even a race or group, right? Which is the same as not native to the islands. The author referred to those alien species that damage or destroy their habitat, which means the same as habitat destruction, right? So the answer here is species. Why? For establishment of agriculture and by various species which are not native to the islands, right? Coming to the next question, question number 13, right? Those species also prey on eggs and young tortoises. Prey on means they feed on young tortoises, right? Also fed on baby tortoises and tortoises, what? Eggs. So the answer there is going to be eggs and 12 answers is going to be species. Both plural form. Passage 2. The intersection of health, sciences, and geography. Questions 14 to 19. So reading passage 2 has 8 sections A to H. Which paragraph contains the following information? An acceptance that not all diseases can be totally eliminated, right? Now, if we go to para D, the author mentioned some information about health, geography and diseases. It is an increasingly important area of study in a world where diseases like polio are re-emerging Respiratory diseases continue to spread and malaria prone areas are still fighting to find a better cure, right? The words continue to spread and still fighting to find a better cure means that humans cannot control the above mentioned diseases as of now, right? 
A better cure for them means they are likely, which means the same as they are not totally eliminated. Because if it's totally eliminated, we can't say we're looking for a better cure. Later in paragraph, later in the paragraph, we find a key statement. People will always prone to illnesses. So is it completely eliminated? No, right? And that is being spoken about in para D. Next one, examples of physical conditions caused by human behavior, right? So examples which are caused by, no, examples of physical conditions which are caused by human behavior. If you go to para C, the author gives you some examples. The human behavior referred to includes the massive number of cars being driven and the cutting down of forests. The physical conditions which have resulted in large cities are smog and pollution that cause asthma, lung problems, eyesight issues and more, right? So examples of physical conditions are definitely being told here. So that would be para C. Next one, question number 16. A reference to classifying diseases on the basis of how far they extend geographically. Now, if you go to para F, the author mentioned, a way of categorizing illnesses and diseases. Categorizing means same as to classify, right? which means to divide diseases into groups according to their type. Therefore, we have to pay attention to this part of the text. Work to create a clear way of categorizing illnesses, diseases and epidemics into local and global scales. Health geographers can map the spread of illnesses and attempt to identify the reasons behind the increase or decrease in the illness. So when you can categorize them into local and global scales, it can be understood as to how far they can extend it geographically. So I think para F will talk about classifying the diseases based on their geographical placement. So para F is the most appropriate answer. Next question number 70. Reasons why the level of access of health care can vary within a country, right? Now if you go to para G, the writer mentioned, a very large discrepancy between the options available to people. A very large discrepancy means the same as they vary in the options provided to people. So it can be seen as a level of access. In the previous sentence, the author was talking about the availability or the lack of healthcare provision so we can understand that the level of access to the healthcare, right? And the author named some reasons for this large discrepancy. Different social classes, income brackets, and level of education. So therefore, I think para G gives the answer. Right. Question number 18. A description of health geography as a mixture of different academic fields. If you go to the second sentence in para D, the author claimed health geography is the combination of on the one hand, okay, so it says on the one hand, Knowledge regarding geography and methods used to analyze and interpret geographical information. And on the other, the study of health diseases and health care practices around the world. So when we say combination, it means the same as 
mixture. It is a mixture of knowledge regarding geography. So methods used to analyze and interpret geographical information, right? The study of health diseases and healthcare practices, they also can be considered as different academic fields, right? So I feel the most appropriate answer would be D. Para D has the relevant information about the mixture of different academic fields. Question number 19. A description of the type of area a particular illness is rare. Now, if you go to para B, the author claimed, depending on where you live, okay, you will not have the same health concerns as someone who lives in a different geographical reason, region. And it gave you an example. So I think it's definitely para B. In tropical regions, malaria is widespread. However, in high altitude areas, the desert, sorry, uh, the disease is much less of a problem, right? So it talks about the different um, areas where you live and I think definitely answer is going to be B. Questions 20 to 26. Complete the sentences below. Choose one word only from the passage, right? Certain diseases have disappeared thanks to better health care. So thanks to better something and health care. Okay. So if you go to the first para, the first sentence, many diseases that affect humans have been eradicated. Eradicated means they have disappeared or been removed due to the improvements in vaccinations and the availability of health care. Okay, so what is the answer? Vaccinations, right? So there are two things. Thanks to better, better improvement in vaccinations and health care availability. Okay, so the answer we can write only one word here. So therefore vaccinations is going to be the answer. Question number 21. Because there is more contact between people, something are losing their usefulness. Something or someone are losing their usefulness. Okay. So in the next sentence in the first para, right, the author mentioned contact between people. Uh -huh. In a world that is far more globalized than ever before, people come into contact with one another through travel and living closer and closer to each other. Okay? As a result, super viruses and other infections resistant to antibiotics are becoming more and more common. So the first sentence lets us know that there is more contact between people, right? More globalized, more come into contact. Second one showed its consequences, that the super viruses and other infections are resistant to antibiotic are becoming more and more common, right? So what is happening? Resistant to antibiotics means it's not that useful, right? So therefore, because there is more contact between people, antibiotics are losing their usefulness. You can see infections resistant to antibiotics are becoming more and more common, right? All right, disease causing blank are most likely to be found in hot, damp regions, right? So here, disease causing blank most likely found in hot, damp regions, right? So this gap has to be a noun, which has to be something or someone that can cause the disease, right? So if you have a look at the paragraph talking about malaria, right, which is para B, 
The author mentioned tropical regions that foster a warm and damp environment which the mosquitoes that can give people this disease can grow. So diseases calling, causing mosquitoes are most likely to be found because they are the ones who can give people the disease or diseases, right? So either you can write mosquitoes this way, some people write mosquitoes with an E, Either spelling is accepted. Okay. Question number 23. One cause of pollution is blank that burn a particular fuel. Okay. So one cause pollution is what burn particular fuel. Now if you go to para C, the author names some causes of pollution. They are the massive number of cars being driven, factories that run on coal power, and the rapid industrialization of some countries. Mm -hmm. Among these causes, factories is the word that relates to run on coal power because it runs on a particular fuel type. So one cause of pollution is factories that burn a particular fuel right because it's talking about coal power so answer is factories question number 24 the growth of cities often has an impact on nearby what okay so growth of cities impact nearby what now if you go to para c the last sentence the author explained why the rapid industrialization of some countries can cause pollution. The rapid industrialization of some countries in recent years also led to cutting down of forests to allow the expansion of big cities. Uh -huh. So the growth of cities means the expansion of big cities. And what did, it, what did it have an impact on? The forest, because people had to cut down forests to expand their city. So definitely had an impact on nearby forests is the answer. Question number 25. Something is one disease that is growing after having been eradicated. So one disease that grow after having been eradicated. So we need to find the most appropriate disease, one which is growing, right? Is one disease that is growing. Okay, so after it has been removed, it's still growing now. So para D, the author mentioned, some diseases that need a better cure. One of them is polio, which is re-emerging. Uh -huh. Emerge means to appear. Re-emerge means it's coming back again, right? So what is coming up again? Polio is one of those diseases that was, you know, completely taken out, but now seems to be coming up again. 26. A physical barrier such as a blank can prevent people from reaching a hospital. Okay, so physical barrier of what will prevent people from reaching a hospital? The word needed is after an article, right? Um, and stands in front of a verb. Therefore, it has to be a noun, right? So hospital is mentioned in passage G, which the author took an example of people's attempt to assess the levels of healthcare. The writer states, it may be very difficult for people to get medical attention because there is a mountain between the village and the nearest hospital. So what is the barrier? There is a mountain and that prevents people from coming to the hospital in the middle. 
So answer here is going to be mountain. Passage 3, we are going to have a look at music and emotions. Questions number 27 to 31. Complete the summary below. Choose no more than two words from the passage. So questions 27 and 28 together. It was noted that the music stimulated the brain's neurons to release a substance called what? In two of the parts of the brain which are associated with feeling what? Okay. So, in the last sentence in the second para, the author wrote, the first thing they discovered is that music triggers the production of dopamine, a chemical with a key role setting people's moods by the neurons in both the dorsal and ventral regions of the brain. As these two regions have long been linked with the experience of pleasure, this finding isn't particularly surprising. Trigger means to cause something to start and it can be considered as to stimulate. It is said that music stimulates the production of a chemical called dopamine. A chemical means the same as a substance and production is the same as release. Therefore, dopamine is what we are looking at for question 27 because, right, um, something, a substance called what? Dopamine, right? In two of the parts of the brain which are associated with feeling what? Okay, so linked means associated, okay? Feeling means experience. Therefore, what is it linked with? The feel of feeling the pleasure. Okay. So, dopamine is the answer for 27. For 28, the answer is pleasure. There you go. The two answers. Next one, question number 29 and 30 together. Researchers also observed, right, that neurons in the area of the brain co are called what, okay, were particularly active just before the participants' favorite moments in the music period known as the what. So there are two gaps, 29 and 30. In the first sentence of the third para, the author claimed that the dopamine neurons in the caudate, a region of the brain involved in learning stimulus response associations and in anticipating food and other reward stimuli, were at the most active round 15 seconds before the participants favorite moments in music right so their most uh, their most active is the same as particularly active and the region means the area um, of the brain so it is clear such as region refers to the caudit okay so therefore is called the caudit in the following sentence it says the researchers call this anticipatory phase. So this means anticipatory phase, right? Here this refers to, um, so the researchers call this, sorry, this means the observation made by the researchers, right? And what are they observing? A stage or a phase which is named as the anticipatory phase. So therefore, 29 caudate, 30 anticipatory phase. Question number 31. Activity in this part of the brain is associated with the expectation of reward stimuli such as activity, right, okay, 
this part of the brain, what is it associated with the expectation of reward stimuli, right? If you go to the first sentence in the third para, the author described the codet as a region of the brain involved in learning stimulus response associations and in anticipating food and other reward stimuli, right? Thus, involved in means associated with. And anticipate means to look forward to, uh, which is the same as expect. Therefore, it can be understood that reward stimuli expected by the codet should include food as an example, right? So therefore, question number 31, the answer is food here, anticipating food. Right, so food is a stimuli. Questions number 32 to 36. Choose the correct letter A, B, C or D. What point does the writer emphasize in the first para? Okay, how dramatically our reactions to music can vary. How intense our physical responses to music can be. How little we know about the way that music affects us. How much music can tell us about how our brains operate. Okay, so the key words, what point does the writer emphasize in the first panel? Okay, now looking at the first para, it is claimed that sounds stir us at our biological root. Okay, so we're looking at sounds and everything has music in it, okay? Meaning that music can affect the listeners in a biological way. To demonstrate this, the author gave examples of some physical reactions that we may have when listening to our favorite music. The pupils in our eyes dilate. Pupils means athletiana chuti kaluek, right? The thing that you can see right inside, okay, and how it dilates means lokopodi venahati, right? Our pulse, blood pressure rise, the electrical conductance of our skin is lowered, right? And the cerebellum, a brain region associated with bodily movement, becomes strange, strangely active, okay? So what are we looking at? How intense our physical, what happens to our eyes, what happens to our skin, what happens to the parts of our body? So B would be the most appropriate answer. Next one, what view of the Montreal study does the writer express in the second para, okay? View, uh, Montreal study, second para. So, let's go. In the second para, the author mentioned, although the study involves plenty of fancy technology, Moving on, so we're having a look at the answer, right? In the second para, the author mentioned, although the study involves plenty of fancy technology, including functional magnetic renaissance, imaging, the lignin-based positron emission tomography, scanning, the experiment itself was rather straightforward. The term fancy technology may mean the same as complex technology, but there is no information about whether it was unnecessary or not. So D cannot be the correct answer. Neither B, because the author mentioned that the experiment itself was rather straightforward, not too simplistic. Further, in the paragraph it stated, scientists were able to obtain an impressively exact and detailed portrait of music in the brain. So exact means 
precise and impressive means remarkable. So this information suggests that the Montreal study produced remarkably precise data, which is answer C. So you should know synonyms for this question. 34. What does the writer find interesting about the results of the Montreal study? Because the questions follow the order of the text and we already know the position of the answer for question 33, just pay attention to the following sections, right? So in the beginning of the third para, it is said that what is rather more significant, sorry, what is rather more significant is the finding that dopamine neutrons in the caudet were at their most active round 15 seconds before the participants' favorite moments in the music. The fact that the caudet was particularly active before the music climax can be considered the timing of participants' neutral responses. This observation was followed by the author's question. The question, of course, is what all these dopamine neutrons are up to. Why are they so active in the period preceding of acoustic climax? So it can be inferred that the timing of a response of the neurons in the brain really caught his attention. In other words, the timing of the participants' neuro neutral neural responses to the music, right? So the most appropriate answer would be A, right? Can be a bit difficult, but if you actually logically think through and read through, it should be easy. Why does the writer refer to Mayer's work on music and emotion, right? Mayer's work, music and emotion, right? So let's go. By using the skimming and scanning skills, we can easily locate the word Mayer. I would use more of scanning. And that is there in the fifth para. The first sentence mentioned, to demonstrate this psychological principle, the musicologist Leonardo Mayer, in his classic book Emotion and the Meaning in Music, analyzed the fifth movement of Beethoven's string quartet in C sharp minor. Hence, to understand what this psychological principle refers to, we need to read the previous para. The fourth para explains the findings of the Montreal study in which the participants' caudate neurons were at their most active few moments before the climax of the music. So it turns out that the most important part of every song or symphony is when the patterns break down. It is annoying, boring, like an alarm clock. Numerous studies, after all, have demonstrated that dopamine neurons quickly adapt to predictable rewards, right? And Mayer is a musicologist and his analysis of music offers an explanation of why the brain is responding in this reward principle, right? So therefore, it can be inferred that the author mentioned Mayer's book to support the Montreal study and the most appropriate answer is B. So you have to get the link between the two paras. Question number 36. According to Leonardo Mayer, what causes the listener's emotional response to music, right? So according to who, Leonardo Mayer, what causes emotional response, right? Now, if you go to the last para, it stated that according to Mayer, it is the suspenseful tension of music 
arising out of our unfulfilled expectations that the source of music's feeling. So the author then explained more in detail. Maya argued that the emotions we find in music come from the unfolding events of music itself. So emotional response is not connected to A or C, the listener's memories or sympathies. This embodied meaning arises from the patterns of the symphony invokes and then ignores. The unfolding events and the patterns the symphony invokes and then ignores both imply the unpredictable part of any musical piece which is considered to be the most appealing, right? So, hence Mayer refers to the music itself and the patterns of the music. So, it can be understood that internal structure is responsible for the listener's feelings and therefore the most appropriate answer is the internal structure D. Questions 37 to 40, complete the sentence with the correct ending. So you have the endings there, you have to complete it. The Montreal researchers discovered that. So from question 34, we already read through this Montreal research continuously and they found that the coded neurons, right, were at their most active around 15 seconds before the participants' favorite moments in the music came. So before means prior, right, and the participants' favorite moments can be considered as key points, right, and therefore the answer should be F. Question 38. Many studies have demonstrated what? The author mentioned in the fourth para that numerous studies after all have demonstrated that dopamine neurons quickly adapt to predictable rewards. If we know what's going to happen next, then we don't get excited. So the word numerous means many, right? And the next two sentences suggest that we can actually predict what's going to happen which means the outcomes are also predictable and we don't get excited, right? Then of course, the brains do not get excited and the dopamine neurons have already become familiar, right? And they lead to decreasing neuron activity. So here the answer should be B. 39, Mayer's analysis of Beethoven's music show that. Beethoven's music, it is mentioned in the fifth para, right? And it says, Mayer dissected 50 measures, right, of the masterpiece, showing how Beethoven begins with the clear statement of a rhythmic and harmonic pattern, and then an ingenious tonal dance, carefully holds off repeating it. To dissect means to analyze and interpret minutely. So Mayer's work can be considered an analysis of Beethoven's composition. This analysis shows that the musician held off or delayed the patterns and he had previously put in the beginning of the musical piece. So such delay keeps us listening, waiting expectantly for our reward of the pattern to become completed. This has the same meaning as emotive music delays giving listeners what they expect to hear. Answer is E. Can be very difficult, especially if you don't know anything about music and you're not interested, can be really boring, right? But still, you have to follow through with it. The last question, right? Earlier theories of music suggest that. Now, it is mentioned in the last para that earlier theories of music focused on the way a sound can refer to the real world images and experiences. Therefore, real is the same as actual, right? Images means pictures, 
and experiences can be understood as events. So this information can be paraphrased into earlier theories of music and suggested that a sound can refer to actual pictures and events. Hence, the appropriate answer is C because it talks about emotive music can bring mind to actual pictures and events. Right? So with that, we have come to the end of the discussion where we discussed all the answers um, in book 12, test 3. Can be very difficult because most of it was about music or a tortoise or about things that are not um, you know, familiar to us. But doing these papers will definitely help you to uh, increase your score because you will start thinking and it will help you when we run through the answers like this to spot where the answers are and run through your answers and see the difference. So with that, we come to the end of the discussion where we discussed Cambridge Book 12, Test 3. Mm -hmm.